as five. I brought it down to one because I wanted it to be really quickly. And then I even thought that one was a little too long, so I slided it down to about eight. We'll go 8.5 like that, right? 0.85, we'll do the same here. So it's lifetime and it's duration, less than a second, right? Um, I wanted the speed to be zero because I don't want this thing moving. I just want an instantiating on the ground, growing in size, and then fading out. It, like I said, it's a sigil, right? It's a magic sigil that's going to be around the base of my character. If you add speed to it, I'll show you right here. And also, I turned uh, looping off. You can check right there, right? So if we go into our scene, here's our particle effect. If I click simulate, you'll see my particle, right? If I add speed to it, you'll see it starts kind of moving in every direction, right? It's adding this kind of velocity that it doesn't need, right? I want it to stay in place. So we want to make sure we take our speed and make that zero, right? That'll ensure that it stays in place. To further ensure that, I'm going to go down to the shape of the particle. I'm going to make it a sphere. And I'm going to reduce the size. You'll probably have something like that to start. I want to reduce the size all the way down to 0 0.01. It's a very, very small size that this thing can emit from, right? Some of the other values we're going to need to mess with are the size of the particle, right? To start, you're usually starting with something that's about uh, three units. We want to bump this up to almost nine units, right? So that's going to give us a nice size particle that we can play with, right? I also didn't just want one sigil. I wanted a couple of sigils kind of fading in and out to kind of give it a feeling like it's almost like electrical, right? That was the graphic I drew, right? So in order to do that, we're going to add a little bit of rotation to those specific pieces. I did a constant between two curves, or um, between two constants, which means for each particle, it's going to consistently rotate them in different directions, right? I have one going in 360 degrees and another going in negative 360 degrees. So when I play it, I get this nice kind of alternating effect between the different particles, right? Kind of looks, almost looks like electrical, right? Cool. So from there, as I go down, we set our sphere. We're going to change the color over lifetime. In color over lifetime, this is where you're going to adjust the alphas and different colors of the particles as they're birthed and instantiated, right? So in here, if we look at our particle and we simulate it, we see that it kind of fades up and then it fades out, right? And each one does that, okay? In order to do that, in your color over lifetime, I basically came in here, set my initial alpha to zero. Then I kind of tweaked the colors a little bit as it kind of grew and created itself. I went from blues to whites to blues, messed with the alpha channel game all the way up. Then it started to taper off and it goes down and then eventually to zero. So if we look at our particle over its lifetime, it goes from zero, up, down, kind of changes color a little bit. Great for something like electricity, right? Also, I wanted to mess with the size over the lifetime of it. I wanted the particle to grow big and then kind of subtly kind of get smaller, right? Very, very subtly, right? That's cool. I also wanted to mess with the rotation over lifetime of the particle. So I constantly want this thing rotating in a consistent 45 always degrees, always moving, right? It would be kind of, sometimes it's okay to just have it in the same spot. I just thought it would look cooler if it's rotating. It's already moving, it might add to the effect. We added a little bit there. And these are, this is what's great about the, the particle effects, is you can just go in and start tweaking all these values and consistently just keep looking at it and playing it and everything, right? Um, Next thing I did was, in your renderer, this is really important, to get that particle. So this sigil that I made, if you click on render, you're going to have to drag that particle into the material. You will not see your particles that you create unless you do that, right? I also billboarded it against the horizontal, right? So I wanted this stuck to the ground, and there's a reason for that. Normally, when you make a particle, it's just going to be billboarded to the camera. So I'll just change it to billboard real quick so you can see. If I simulate, it's right in your face, right? Oh, yeah. I wanted that billboarded to the ground, so we do a horizontal billboard. Simulate that, you'll see it's kind of stuck to the ground, right? Makes sense? We're Very doing cool. a, yep. a magical sigil on the ground, that kind of thing. Uh, from there, we need to add more uh, pieces to it. So I'm creating, I'm basically have to create a multitude of particle effects, assemble them all together to create one particle effect. That's what I'm doing right now. Okay, so the first one, I have my magic sigil. 
Then what I did was I actually just duplicated that magic sigil and I made a variation of it. And this is gonna be kind of an explosive element that comes out of it, right? Using the exact same graphic. So in magic sigil, I made magic sigil two. You'll see here if I simulate that, you'll see it's a little bit different, right? I just tweak some of the values so it comes in, pulses, and fades out really quickly. And this just kind of adds to the whole effect, right? You have multiple textures you're playing with. I also created a spray, which was using just standard particles. I just had that kind of fly out, right? And then I created my magic rain, which was basically the same type of effect, right? So we have a simple little area on the ground that shoots up these little these guys, right? I don't know if you can see them kind of in there. I'll play this again. Might be hard to see on the stream. Oops, go to Magic Rain. See how they shoot up? Mm -hmm. So in the Magic Rain, what I did was I made two seconds of its lifetime. I actually added speed on this because I wanted them shooting up, right? And I added high speed on it. I put eight, right? Instead of zero, like the other thing that just sits on the ground, this one's eight. We want them Fast, shooting, right up, shooting yeah. up, right? Um, I also wanted to billboard them vertically, right? So if it's just a standard billboard, you'd think, oh, well, they're straight, right? They'll just go up. But no, it's, it's billboarding to the canner, so you're going to get a weird effect. They're not going to be 100%, right? They're, they're, they're constantly looking and turning towards the camera. So you have to make sure that this is set to vertical billboard, right? And then you'll get that kind of effect, cool. right? It's great for rain, too, if you're yeah. going the other way and you're trying to make rain and stuff like that. So anyways, once you get these four pieces together, right, we take our original Magic Sigil, right, which is this piece right here. We, let me move it off to the side here so you can see it. Get it away from those other particles. There we go. So under here, we've got the initial Magic Sigil that we created, the variation of the Magic Sigil we created, that spray piece, and the rain. And they're all parented underneath the initial Magic Sigil that I created, right? So in here, if I click on the main particle, I click stop, I simulate, you'll see right away cool. you get a pretty cool effect. Right? Huh. So, you know, he throws his potion down, he throws his hands in the air, and whatever, right? <laughs> so it'd be something cool that you could put underneath your character just to kind of enhance it, right? Like a bonus, a power-up, whatever. Um, in order to get those playing at the same time, all you have to do is deal with sub-emitters. And so using our main sigil that we created, I come down to my sub-emitters, and it works if they're parented to the main object, right? So in your sub-emitters, you're gonna come in here, and you're just gonna, after you've parented to your main object, you're just gonna drag them in. So if I look at my sub-emitters right here, I just drag my particles in. So at birth, I want it to create this new magic sigil whatever, right? The one I made right there. Then I wanted to drag the spray in there as well, so when it birthed, it also did that spray explosion, right? Mm -hmm. I, you only have enough room to add two um, sub-emitters at birth of a particle. Um, I think you're just limited by the, the Unity system on how many you can put in there. But that's okay, because our magic rain plays at the same rate throughout the entire thing, so we can also parent that, but it doesn't have to actually happen at birth, right? It's more of just kind of an added effect. So once you put all those together, you've got a really cool little particle effect. Simulate it, boom, you're good to go, right? Similar effect we used when we created the explosion of the bats for, let me see, right here, for our little vampire. If I come in here, Go to bat, so you'll see in here we got bat particle, I think it's called bat burst right here. Bring bat burst into the thing, there you go. So what I'm doing with bat burst is kind of a similar effect, except I also added another particle which was a texture sheet animation. And that's what these little bat guys are right here. And you can see that right here, right? So I, I basically created a long strip texture with a bunch of bats kind of flying, like a whole animation. Now and the I, rule here is because, you know, we're so used to the 2D uh, animation system in Unity. That's the one thing I wish Unity had in with it when you're doing like the texture sheet animations, uh, especially for particles, is you can't yet use the 2D system, but I'm sure it's probably coming. But basically in your particle effect, so if I look at my bat burst that I have right here. Normally in the, in the Unity uh, animation system, if you, if you take a sprite sheet, 
or multiple images, you can drag and drop them in your scene and you automatically have an animation. It just it just works. Yep. And uh, yeah, this one is kind of the odd one out. This one's on kind of, yeah, you have to make it ahead of time, essentially, bring it in as a, as a sprited animation, and then just tell the, the sprite system to use that particular animation. So if I go down to my bat burst, I go to bat's particle, did you tell me it had to be kind of a fixed grid that... Um... Yeah, so I, I, I add the texture sheet animation down here. And in here I tell it what type of texture it is, how many slices there are. There's four slices in the X direction and it's one, it's one row, right? So four slices in one row. Use the whole sheet. I have it doing 20 cycles, which is plenty for what, what it's trying to do in animation-wise. Add that in, then you'll have your... Uh, you, can, you can use even more than that, too. You can really customize it with those tiles. But essentially, you could do an electrical effect, you could do bats, you could do little you know, embers, whatever, right? So that's, that's kind of a cool effect to just add in a little bit extra to your particle effects and make them do cool things. Another great thing to do is if you're animating like animated sigils or something like that, having them actually animate like in After Effects, saving them out as different frames, bringing those in as a tile sheet animation, adding them to your particles, you can really get crazy with the type of stuff you do. But, just a quick kind of overview of some cool stuff you can do, was, and I know okay. some of you had asked for some some magical <laughs> that was effects. Cool so. on the fly. You know what? Yeah. You know what would be neat to show real quick. Um, so you have that on your computer. You've just developed over there. I want to bring that into um, the main source branch of what we've been working on here. Now we're not up to date with each other. Okay. So you want to show how you just export that into a Unity package? Absolutely. So let's say I just made this cool magical sigil burst that's awesome, and I want to I want Adam to throw it in his project right now but we don't really want to sync up projects. I just kind of want to email it to him so he has it. Easy way to do it, boom, we've got our magic sigil effect right here. It's ready to go. I need to make it a prefab, right? So I'm just going to drag it down into my Unity project here. Um, actually, here, I'll put it in a better menu here. So we'll go Assets. We'll just drag it into the core of our assets right now. Drag it into our Assets. There's our magic sigil prefab right here. All I do, click on it, right-click on it, Export package. It's going to tell me all the stuff I need that's associated with that package. Plus, it has the prefab in there. I say export. I put that on my Common desktop, wherever. Magic sigil. Save. Makes the package. Boom. There it is. I throw my USB drive on my computer. <laughs> And then I'll load this in for the next module, and so uh, I'll, I'll copy it in the game and have it kind of in the starting location. So maybe he'll drop down on the starting location yep. with a particle going underneath him as he drops that onto it, maybe? Something like that. Drag <laughs> this little particle effect into the USB drive, and we are good to go. Good to go. Pass that off to guy in charge. <laughs> Where? <laughs> he then loads it up in his game. He's got a cool particle effect. We've you got our main cool graphics. Just to show you how fast that process is here, that was a uh, magic. Let's close Sigil. this later. Yeah. Don't save this one. Just to make sure we only have one Unity project open because uh, when we double click it here, we can always go to assets, import package, and point it to that custom package. Honestly, I just like doing this where you just double click on it and it brings it in. There we go. Magic Sigil, import. Go to our root, where well, that was dumped there. I'm going to drag that into the uh, prefabs folder here. There we go. All right. Now, a good, a good place for this, maybe right here. There you go. Let's see what happens. I think I'm falling down right into the spot. Should work all right. If it plays, oh, it'll play. It's just <laughs> as the day goes on here, it's uh. <laughs> you decided to crash right at the end. <laughs> you did so good. You know, what's probably taking some of the time here too. Is uh, the, all right? There we go. Go. Let's look down. There we go. Uh, it, it happened fast, but you can see the kind of the uh, everything shooting off from there. Yeah. But there we have it. Pretty cool. I'll fix it up a little bit. I'll, I'll reposition that for the next one because uh, in the next module, we're going to do building for Windows 10. Okay. And uh, that will be the final module of the day. So thanks for joining us on this one. And we'll Thank see you. you back in a few minutes for the uh, module six, building for Windows 10. Thank Perfect. you. Perfect. Thanks.
Finally, the last module of the day, module six. If you're watching us now, thanks for hanging out with us or tuning in. And if you're watching us online, well, you could have just clicked and joined us without having to sit through the rest <laughs> of us. So uh, either way, we're happy that you're here for uh, the final one building for Windows 10. Uh, this has been a wonderful day of developing Windows 10 games with Unity. I'm well rested.